Um, hi, welcome to Deep Inner Podcast. Thank you for being here. Um, this is our first episode, and we are a music, lyrics, lovers, deluxe. This means that we get to sit down, analyze lyrics, and try to understand the mind of the artist at the time of making the song. All right. On this one, we are having Jigga Man, Jay Z, Sean Carter himself. All right. In '96, Reasonable Doubt. I have um, like four songs, I think. That we'll try to go through hopefully we'll have enough time we can't decode the whole album we'll just give a brief summary so the whole album focuses on jay-z as a drug dealer in brooklyn and him becoming a successful rapper in many of the songs the album is exploring themes of crime violence street life but also touches on broader issues like race and class in america all right so yeah reasonable doubt is one of my favorite albums of all time why because of the way that jay-z can take his idea and put it out so nicely in a wordplay in 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 a hip-hop format and that is very difficult to do a lot of people can write paragraphs but to be able to write a story in bars it's a whole nother level of creativity brother all right so today um we're gonna be starting with what the evils the evils <clears throat> ah man i love him pop hip hop they never saw it chew quiet or killed it they put it on ice they chill it now that's when i will turn a little now rebuild it rebuild it if you press i relive it you can break me now dog sun sick it's a makadi now oh yeah man took singing or wherever you are bro i miss you bro i miss your music brother all right okay so we decoding the evils first so I had to strip the song. Yeah, this shit is wicked on these mean streets. None of my friends speak. You're trying to win, but then again, maybe it's for the best though. Cause when they're seeing too much, you know they're trying to get you touch. Mm. Right. So in the first part of the song. It's wicked on this mean streets, none of my friends speak, we all trying to win. But then again, maybe it's for the best though, because when they're saying too much, you know they're trying to get you touched. Ah, oh, Jigga, bruh. He is painting a picture on the harsh realities of life on the streets. And he knows how communication amongst friends can be limited or non-existent due to risk of violence or danger. He acknowledges that everyone is trying to succeed but there is a sense of caution and distrust among them when someone speaks too much it can be as an attempt to set them up or reveal sensitive information them snitches brother them snitches so people if you are too open they can take the information about you and use it as a form of a stepping ladder for them to be successful. So he acknowledges that as much as he wants company of other people and wants to be able to be vulnerable and sometimes maybe, you know, take out whatever is inside of him he can't do that because the guys that he's surrounded with are too hungry bro they want to succeed and he knows or acknowledges that they might use him or whatever he says or do or if he discloses so many of his operations 
they might take him down in order for them to shine. And this is not just on the streets. We see it everywhere. That is why they say best friends become the best of enemies. Why do they become the best of enemies? Because they know so much about each other that they can use to destroy another person. Stop snitching, bro. Don't be that person. Don't be that person who uses other people in order for you to be recognized. If you do yourself to the fullest, you will stand out. If you find your craft and you get deep into it, you will definitely, bro, definitely stand out. And nobody will be able to compete with you because nobody can be you. All right? So, yeah, this is Jay-Z. Very deep, right? A person thinks, ah, a rapper, they're going to just talk about their lavish lifestyle and stuff. But, no. Not all the time. Well, there is a lot of that, but not all the time, okay? All right. So, we continue. I said illegal was the easy way out Couldn't understand the mechanics And workers of the underworld Granted, 9 to 5 is how you survive I ain't trying to survive I'm trying to live it to the limit And love it a lot mm. <clears throat> Boss, bro Boss, my G So 9 to 7 is trying to survive I'm not trying to survive I'm trying to live it to the limit And love it a lot Sorry, so Jay-Z is saying that we who work 9 to 5 <laughs> are just trying to survive. So he reflects on the challenges of making a living in the illegal underworld. He acknowledges as well that it's not an easy way out as a lot of people will say crime is an easy way out. A lot of people say that. But it takes a lot of understanding of the mechanics of the game to succeed. If noted, you want the life of crime. I'm not saying be a criminal. I'm saying this is what Jay-Z is saying. It's, he's saying that it, it has more dangers and more threats and can swallow you up. And you can even end up losing your life, right? Right? So yeah, Jay-Z wants to live his life to the fullest. And he's not going to create a curriculum vitae. He's not going to create a resume for him to be able to live there. Because that means he'll be limiting himself in order for him to live the life that he always dreams of. Right? So that is what this verse is saying. All this, this, this bars. <clears throat> Let's continue. Okay. Like ills, poison my body and used to say, fuck my skills. I never prayed to God, I prayed to God. E. That's right, it's wicked. That's life. I live it ain't asking for forgiveness for my sins. Ooh. All right. Life ills, poison my body. I used to say, my skills. I never, I don't, I don't say, sorry, I don't say. I always mute myself when it comes to that. But we are on Jay Z, right? This is not me. This is Jay-Z, all right? So he's reflecting on negative impact that the stresses and the dangers of street life has on his body. Life ills. Poison my body, okay? He acknowledges his past disregard of honing his skills. So he used to say, my skills, right? He used to say, F my skills. And then he only realizes now that that was an important part of him. It means that he missed out on a lot of um, maybe meeting with other rappers in ciphers and trying to learn some different techniques and stuff like that. He feels like he missed out because he, he chose the life of drug dealing over that. But now he sees the power that he has in rhyming, right? In in rapping. He also um, reveals that he prays to Godi. 
which is a reference to a mafia boss john Gotti, if you guys don't know right and then he acknowledges the wickedness in his lifestyle however he doesn't want to account <laughs> and he's not asking for forgiveness for his choices his life choices and action so he's saying that he acknowledges that the life is wicked that he went in but he won was was the right word um he's he's not he doesn't regret whatever it is that's happening all right so yeah Hands. I break bread with the lay hands, picking their reins for angles and all the evils that the game would do. It gets dangerous. Money and power is changing us, and now we're lethal, infected with the evil. Oof. Man, bro. I, I think we can write a book out of every line that he's saying, bro. <laughs> oh. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to get to the other songs because just this one song gets to show who Jay-Z is, what he's standing on. But anyway, we'll get to We don't know. Let's see if we can get to it. All right. So <clears throat> I break bread with the lay heads. Picking their brains for angles on all the game on the evils that the games would do. It gets dangerous. Money and power is changing us. And now we're lethal, infected with the evils. Ish. <sighs> so he describes his association with older, more experienced individuals in the underworld so that he can gain insight into the game. He acknowledges the dangers of the lifestyle and how the pursuit of money and power can change a person. He knows that he and his peers are now lethal and infected with the evils, right? So they're infected with the negative influences or negative forces that we have in life because they are pursuing money and power. All right, so Jay-Z shows the importance of having a mentor or having somebody more experienced in whatever you want to do, right? To say, um, he went to those people trying to get knowledge and insight so that he can be successful. Um, there's a saying that saying um, one day of research can save you a whole year of trial and error so sometimes actually before you do trial and error is best to what research trial and error i know experimenting can be fun adventurous but imagine you're experimenting with a whole body of knowledge or insight it takes your experimenting to the next level. Innovation comes through experimenting, trial and error, trial and error. But in the type of setup that Jay-Z is in, an error might mean that somebody, you know, shot you. Then you don't have a chance to, to get a second life like Super Mario or whatever game character that you like and come and try again right so you don't have you are not guaranteed that chance some people do have it they can get shot maybe two times or three times and still survive and get to you know try again but it is not a lot of people right so he's saying that he goes to the older folks and what And learn from them. Learn from the older folks. You will learn from both what they did right and what they didn't do right. <clears throat> it's the evil sprung. The knowledge just in one song. Imagine that. It's 
We used to fight for building blocks. Now we fight for blocks with builders that make the killing. The closest of friends when we first started, but grew apart as the money grew. Soon grew black hearted. Oof. Huh. So, in this set of lines, Jay Z is comparing the struggles of childhood and the struggles of his parents life his present life so as a child he used to fight for simple building blocks but now he fights for blocks of buildings that generates large profits he also reflects on how he and his friends used to be close but as they pursued money and power they grew apart and became hardened mm. I mean, this is the sad part. These, the guys that you came up with, you want to share success with. Um, when you grow up, you normally grow apart. Maybe because someone is successful, another one is not successful. And honestly, some people just come into your life to try and check your situation so that they can feel better about themselves. I mean, they look at you and compare with themselves to say ah, I'm doing better than this guy and he used to be clever than me in school and things like that and and that is sad and I guess that's what contributes to why we get to separate and I, I would really love to be among people I grew up with or my best friend the best friends that I used to have friends that I used to have growing up and so that they can be able to share in the success or we help each other the power of unity as well because yes you know you'll find that maybe they were more brilliant than me and I might, doing, I might be doing better but that is not me I'm not going to look down on a person because um, I feel like maybe I, I have more money than you or I'm more healthier than you or, you know, my life seems to be making sense than yours because we have different struggles in life and you need your friends to take you out of the struggles. So if you're going to be pushing people away because you don't want to be judged, or if you're pushing people away because you feel like they're less than you. If you don't understand the, 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 the idea that we are all connected. We are all connected. And I don't believe it's a coincidence that I met a certain life in this life. Like a certain somebody in this life. How many people are on earth? Really? How many people are in town when I visit town but you shared a part of me and I shared a part of you and that's special bro that's special okay I I I don't see I don't see that as an accident I don't see that as a coincidence in fact I see how you and I have a, a deeper connection that than some person I meet when I'm doing shopping and I don't even know, right? My level of connection to them is not as strong. So why are we abandoning our, our childhood friends or the people that we came up with, the people we were friends with, right? Is it, is it because of the money? Is it because we were hardened? Like I said, brothers, Jay-Z is hitting social issues as well. And even currently, people are still like that. Hmm? So, me and you, we used to fight over who, who's gonna ride the bicycle but we can't be fighting over who 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 has a better car or who has a better house right that that shouldn't be our fight 
At the end of the day, we shared that bicycle. At the end of the day, we reunited regardless of that bicycle that we, we used to fight on who goes, who goes on first. It wasn't personal. It wasn't petty. It was just, I'm not sure, competition maybe. So let's, let's, let's kill that, bro. I need you. You need me. All right. I think I'm going too deep, bro. Let's go. Thinking back when we first learned to use rubbers, he never learned. So in turn, I'm kidnapping his baby's mother. My hand around the collar, feeding her cheese. She said the taste the dollars was shitty, so I fed her 50. About his whereabouts, I wasn't convinced. I kept feeding her money till her shit started to make sense. Oof. <clears throat> okay. No, this, this one... <laughs> okay, let's just go through it. He reveals a violent and a manipulative plot against a former friend. He recalls how they both learned how to use protection when they were young, the sexual protection like condoms and stuff. But the friend never learned, resulting in an unintended pregnancy. Jay-Z then kidnaps the friend's baby's mother and holds her captive giving her money to gain information about the friend's whereabouts. He also knows that the woman was unhappy with the taste of the small amount of money, so he fed her larger denominations. Whew. Imagine kidnapping your former friend's baby mama. I think that's extreme. <laughs> I think it's extreme. I, I don't know about you, but yeah. So, Jay-Z sees a person who has a child having a weakness. The baby mama is a weakness, and the child is a weakness. So, the baby mama will likely have a lot of information about the friend, and then he's trying to use that to try and gain information. I'm not sure what he's trying to do with the information about where his friend is. But then he is willing to, not just to kidnap her, but to give her a lot of money. Because she, he found that this woman is unsatisfied with the amount of money that she's having. And yeah. So yeah, it deals, uh, let's talk about uh, teenage pregnancy and the unuse of protection um, which can result in STDs and stuff like that so a lot of people I mean a child is a blessing we can't deny that but a lot of people um, do it not calculative not being aware of the implication that they will have for this two to ten minutes of of pleasure. That means that um, if if we look in the South African context, um, we see young ladies dumping their children with their grandmothers. Not only that taking government money for the children, the Sasa funds and going to groove with it and that's because they were not ready to have a child at that time and this is affecting the child in a bad way because instead of him getting that Formula 1 or those diapers, the mom decides to go um, drink alcohol with the money and she left the child with the granny the granny is on pension fund and she's looking after maybe eight other grand grandkids how is her pension fund and this is not pension fund from waking the, the, the one they call service no that's the pension fund from government which is like less than 2,000 rands, right? But she, the grandmother 
still manages to try and cover all of the eight grand grandkids so that they can still go to school so that they can still eat and this type of behavior contributes a lot to our poverty to our mental health i mean the way we were raised we have so many traumas so many traumas that we still need to deal with um STDs, I don't even want to touch STDs because those are even the worst. But it's a lifelong commitment. You do it, you have a consequence that you have to deal with. So you have to be ready when it shouldn't be unintended. It should be intended when you have your kids. They should be planned and you should have a bigger plan. I know sometimes the plan doesn't work out, but at least you calculated steps in the future to say, you know what, this is what I want to do. All right. So, yeah, unintended pregnancies, it's real. Okay. All right. Um, let's continue, bro. Who could ever foresee? We used to stay up all night at slumber parties. Now I'm trying to rock his wrist to sleep. All the years we were real close. Now I see his fears through her tears. No, she wishing we were still close. Don't cry, it is the B. In time, I take away your miseries and make it mine. The E is the Yeah. So Jay-Z now is reflecting to the drastic changes in his life relationships. He also acknowledges the unexpected turn of events and how he never thought that he would end up in this situation. He also reveals his intention to seduce and sleep with his friend's woman, highlighting his disloyalty and lack of morals. He knows that his friends sees the fears through the woman's tears and knows that she wishes they were still close. He offers to take away the pain and make it his own. Wow. So, yeah. Who could ever foresee? We used to stay all night at Slumber Nights trying to sleep. All these years we were real close. Yeah. So, it's a problem. Jay-Z is a very honest person. And he's vulnerable in his lyrics. A lot of people don't have the guts to actually vent out where where they were wrong. Right? So he acknowledges his desire to have sexual relations with his friend's woman or previous friend. And then yeah he still sees that you know um yeah so he he sees the pain that the 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 woman is going through when he looks at the pain let me try and play it again i think i missed a couple of things B. In time, I take away your miseries and make it mine the e is god i want to kick his life man I'm not sure what's happening with my thing. It just went to 14 minutes. But yeah, so we see Jay-Z saying what? He's saying that he's not really an honest person. He's not. And I mean, he is an honest person, but he's a disloyal person that um, he would still put his desire first before friendship and he would sleep with let's say you and i are buddies and he would i me sleeping with your with your wife or your baby mama that is breaking bro code but he acknowledges that and because he's honest he was he admits everything all right so yeah i think we've learned a lot from reasonable doubt the evils maybe what i should do is try to 
just go through each song in the album so sort of a series right where we get to go through all the songs one by one because i see we are already on 30 minutes imagine i didn't think that one song will 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 go all the way to 30 minutes it's the song we are already on the Yeah, my flesh, no nigga could test. My soul is possessed by the evils in the form of diamonds and lexuses. The exorcist got me doing stitch like homie. You don't know me, but the whole world owe me strip. Was thought to be a pleasant guy on my fucking life. So now I'm down for whatever. Ain't nothing nice. Throughout my junior high years, it was all friendly. But now this higher learning got the Remy and me. Let go, it's invaded my kidneys. Got me ready to let go of mama, forgive me. I can't be held accountable to evil beating me down for Got me running with guys, making G's, telling lies that sound true. Come test me. I never cower for the love of money, son. I'm giving lead showers. Stop screaming. You know the demon said it's best to die. And even if Jehovah Witness said he'll never testify, the evil. We nearly missed the first, right? That's the last verse. Okay, let's try to decode it. So. He's asserting his superiority over other rappers or other humans, claiming that no one can test him physically, right? However, he then reveals that he is possessed by evils in form of material possessions like diamonds, Lexus, and stuff like that. He also compares his situation to that of uh, a protagonist in the movie the exorcist who is possessed by a demon and then he says that he's willing to do whatever it takes to get what he wants and that his pleasant demeanor from before has disappeared he mentioned that his use of alcohol has led him to be more aggressive and ready to fight despite this he feels he cannot be held responsible for his action because it's the evils that are controlling him. <clears throat> wow. Right? Yes. So, in the last verse, um, he's, he says that he, he was taught to be a nice guy all his life. But now he's down with whatever. Ain't nothing nice. Right? So, we get to see Jay-Z saying that his character or what he was taught to be growing up used to stand in his his way of living the lavish life. And now he's willing to do whatever it takes. I mean, a person who's willing to do whatever it takes to get what he wants is dangerous. Cannot be trusted. Right? But... Like I said, he is very honest and big ups to him for that, for allowing us into his head, his life, without holding anything back, with full honesty that he was willing to do whatever it takes for him to be rich. He was willing to do whatever it takes for him to get the life that he wants. And whatever it takes means that whatever it takes so he is going against uh, the teachings of of his youth from the community from the parents he even says mama forgive me right let me see this he says that i cannot be held, held accountable mama forgive me so he's saying that the liquor that has invaded his kidneys is the one that is making him aggressive the switching blame right so it is not him it is the alcohol blame it on the uh, 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 alcohol blame it on the, uh, uh, uh. so it is not him it's the alcohol but 
the only person that he would ask forgiveness from is his mother. That shows the type of relationship that he had with his mother in 96. We're not sure now. But in 96, he would do whatever. But then, because it hurts he, the mom, you know, when you are a parent, you will, if, if your child is doing wrong things, they, they will affect you emotionally. And that's the only person that he's willing to ask for gift, forgiveness from. Anyone else, he doesn't care. All right. So, yeah, this is Reasonable Doubt 96, The Mind of Jay-Z, The Evils. Like I said, we are in too much time already. We'll just decode one song at a time, okay? So, we'll do a series and decode it, all right? All right, um, yeah, subscribe, like share with your friends like i said um unlike questions and reasons this is a channel where i'm trying to you know make the mula so yeah man watch watch the ads watch the advert or become a member or whatever you feel like you want to do or donate to this video if you like all right so we are thankful for jay-z for being honest and putting all these things in a song in an entertaining way that people can get to be interested in his story. So, yeah. There's no dispute that he's a legend in the hip-hop space. And maybe even more now because he's a billionaire, right? Alright, so that willingness to do whatever it takes took him somewhere. I don't know. You decide. Alright, so it's your boy the R. The R my G, the R baby. <laughs>